Doctors are thick as shit. We've got three patients set up. I might fuck up the first one, but by the third one, I'm going to be a fucking brain surgeon motherfucker. Now, see, this is what I do. Fucking, I'm going to be prime minister. What are you doing? You'll never exceed your most wild expectation. Never. That guy, I mean, it's been a long, long time since a guy came in that was as ill-suited to do this as he is, and he did it. It's been a long fucking time. we got maybe six or eight people in 28 years that are like that, and then we've got you. And then he called the next day, or actually that night. Oh, God, thank you. Because it is fucking easy during the interviewing process. If they say one wrong, fuck you, next. And he actually tells me, fuck, I love it. I mean, I love it. You wouldn't say, you weenie, cunt, vaginas. Wouldn't say shit if it was in your mouth. When you go to Reddit in six months, writing how it didn't work, make sure you put because you were a big vagina and it didn't work. The guy I thought was going to make it in the class was one of the other Irish. What a polished, smooth motherfucker he was. He looked like James Bond. He talked like James Bond, but he was Irish and not Scottish. God damn. He had that je ne sais quoi, as the French say. 26 days. 100% seller finance. You name the price, I name the terms. You can learn all that later. That's what the Greeks taught me. That's what they're going to ask The ruthless group that I've been associated with. You all look stunned. And you should be. You should be fucking embarrassed. He didn't have to come to the seminar. I told him. Did he say that his first deal is 10 to 12 million? Yes. Pounds. You are correct. Really, you look mortified. It's like your mama just died. Same mama that should have never given birth to you. <laughs> YouTube, go fuck yourself. It's all free on the site. Don't bother me. The real reason, other than the richer countries know that all the poor countries are going to steal the money when they give the funding, supposedly. You realize none of this is guaranteed money. We hope they fulfill. Well, hope springs eternal. It's not going to happen. And all the big guys know it. Forget the fact that I've been to both polls. Forget that. God, I wish Sally and I were into cameras and shit more when we went to the polls. Oh, fuck. All we have is pictures of us standing on the pole with a flag. God almighty. Their laugh makes it easy. Some of you that have better communication skills, it will be slightly easy, but that applies to everybody in this room. It's going to be hell. The system is built on a building block, from the chairman to the CEO to the CFO, the accountant, the lawyer, the industry experts, to warming up the banks, the accounting firm, the law firm, to going to the motivated seller. You will have made three or four or 500 presentations. You will be smooth as baby shit. Some of the kids say we're as smooth as Kenya's con men. But that's what it takes. Or you use the pig fuckers method. A bull in a china shop, you just run stomping on everybody is what I do. But it's not going to be easy. It certainly isn't. I said this in 18 hours in 1993. The longest seminar I've given was 27 hours. I ran over about 19 and a half hours for the seminar and between 19 and a half and 26 and a half hours Q&A. One day, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, and that's it. I had 61 people in the seminar the first time, a thousand ahead. No webinars, no shit, no tapes, no website, no nothing. A lot of the big money was made in the 90s. In 1986, a woman's handshake was 103 or 104 pounds pressure, you know, hand pressure. A man's handshake was 112 now that you're shaking hands again. I don't particularly have a hard handshake unless somebody, you know, you squeeze commensurate with the other person. That's 1986. In 2016, a woman's handshake is 111 and a man's handshake is 98. What happened? In 1980, the average testosterone level of a man 26, considered them boys, was 276. In 1980, the average of a 26-year-old now, instead of 270-something, is 210. Normal testosterone for a man is between 300 and 700, depending on how old you are. The higher the number for the young guys, the lower the number for the old guys. By 70, a man is not producing any more testosterone, supposedly. About five years ago, we had a Chinese doctor in the audience talking about her boyfriend, couldn't get it up. Anyway, and I said, what's the testosterone level, doc? She says, it's about 400. I don't need to put that on YouTube, what questions I ask. But then, well, what's yours, Mr. Pena? I don't know. So during lunch, I went and I got my latest medical, 1800. It's been as high in the last several years as 25. My handshake, which is about 135 pounds normally, and it's gone up since I got that fucking test. You know, you see me up here going like this. Well, I used to, in the early days, I used to have one of those squeeze things. We're through. Guys in the military can't hold a gun. I'm not glad I heard that, but I'm glad I heard it because I'm going to use it. Think back. Who in your life have you met? Please don't say me. Would you like your kids to be like? If anybody, they used to say in the old days, a woman had wide hips, but she was uh, good for birthing kids. I think they said something like that. I'm not so sure about that, but at least they used to say that. I thought it was just an excuse for a fat ass myself. But anyway, because I like them lean and mean and built for high speed endurance. I'm telling you a lot of this because I want you to understand the other side, there are no competition because they believe it's easy. I mean, you should roll over them like a tank, not necessarily like the pig fucker. All these guys are rich by your standards. You're going to see at least one gal. The Viking bitch is an alpha bitch, the more refined ladies that are here may not be able to relate to the Viking bitch, but you guys, she's six foot two, 215 pounds of twisted steel and pants. 
She's a big, healthy, extremely strong gal. Now, who would you rather have as your kid? Greta, you know who that is? Albert Einstein, same age. You want Ms. blah, 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 blah? Corporate world, when we talk about financing, the fact that there's $2.9 trillion been given for fossil fuel investments, the banks that are all saying that they're being good have given almost $3 trillion to fossil fuel. All the big banks. Almost 100% of the banks are still investing in fossil fuel. And it's not going to change. There's about 40 to 60 years left of oil. I think I might have said this. 40 to 60 years left of gas and about two to 400, depending on who you want to believe, coal. I said a long, long time ago, we will stop fossil fuel when we run out of assets. Not a day before. And you're going to see, mark my words, I may not be alive. The lines will cross within a year of us running out. We will discover that either climate change is bullshit or we'll figure out a way to stop it. Within a year, some of you will still be alive. Some of the older ones won't. These are my real superstars, even better than the Hall of Fame. We got a umbrella salesman from Malta. We have escort from Canada. And we've got a lap dancer, pole dancer from London. All QLA superstars. And then we got you. My lap dancer hung up her spikes, as she said, 10 years ago. She used to be a size six. My escort hasn't hung up her condoms. I didn't realize that gals carry condoms. That was a revelation to me about two, three years ago. No fucking way. I walked into the seminar room and I said I wouldn't know a condom if it bit me. There was a plastic thing about that big on the floor in front of my fitness chair. And everybody's trying to not laugh. And I'm looking at it, push it with my foot. And then I flip it over and it said Jurax. And everybody busts out laughing. They're telling me that women, they carry them now. And I said, do you have dispensers in the toilets, like in the men's toilets? I can't remember what they answered me. I was in the ladies' toilet. If these people can do it, all... Now, one is educated. I'll take that back. One is educated. I'm not going to tell you which one is educated. Why not you? Brother salesman, when he came to me, can I do this? I said, absolutely. Are you hungry? I don't mean I'm hungry for food, but I, yeah, I don't want to sell umbrellas and all the other shit they sell on those. I can see most of you standing behind that fucking selling umbrellas, selling hats, sun hats, and little inner tubes to put around your little shithead kids to keep them from. I see you. The gals could be lap dancers. I'm not sure that if you're physically fit enough to be a pole dancer because you got to have some skills set, I'm told. The gals, with all due respect, they look good. I'm sure they could be escorts. Other than the physicality of the pole dancer, qualify. But most of you would be behind selling umbrellas. I have more strange cases than these but they're unbelievable. So I don't even try. I've tested the market. I don't try to sell you that, even though it's the truth, because it's so fucking unbelievable. You can't bear it. the validity, how down the food chain some of my mentees are. This isn't down the food chain. My umbrella salesman made a good living, as good as half the people in this room. But he says, it's like you say, Mr. Pena, it's the people that kill this. You know, I'm on the beach getting raised, and blah, 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 but I got to deal with people. Even the umbrella salesman has got to deal with people. The lap dancer obviously is dealing with people, more so than the pole dancer. Lap dancer, because right there, physically, with them. And of course, the escort is dealing with people. The escort, who's been here twice, says, it's a great business, Dan, except you got to deal with men, which I find kind of cute. But you guys, you have no idea the benefit you have, not just because you're here, but because it doesn't matter how smart you are, how dumb you are, what color you are. I'm trying to say that in a nice way. Whatever your sexual persuasion is, we got them all covered. I'm trying to eliminate day by day all the reasons you're thinking why you can't do it. By the last day, there'll still be a couple of doubts. You'll figure out something perhaps I haven't experienced, and I've experienced it all. It all starts with the chairman and the gals will get a chairman easier i don't mean it for the wrong reason but they'll just get it easier because it's easy for them i'd like to change that model make it tougher on the bitches i haven't been able to do it in a quarter of a century so it's not likely i'm gonna god damn i am god who else can do this nobody in when his 2000 cold call came to me a peasant hungry hungarian peasant 10 euros in his pocket heard holy t-shirt holy jeans and there's you with all the fucking negative baggage you got some of you in this room got more baggage than that little Indian kid. You don't have any positive baggage. I was looking at some of my stuff when I was a young officer. I thought that I was going to be Douglas MacArthur. Oh, God. You know, this is a real picture. They carry shit around like this in India. It's analogous to the baggage you have. A couple of little Asian guys. Was that you? Ladies and gentlemen, once upon a time, you had a dream. You saw life as an exciting challenge, and you took a gusty chance. You made a terrifying leap into the unknown and survived to experience the sweet taste of victory. I don't know when this was, but I do know you did it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Perhaps it was a death-defying skateboard or bike trick. Maybe it was climbing the tallest tree in the park or asking out your first date. Many of you will have at one time taken the frightening step of starting your own business, stacking all of your chips on the table and betting everything you own on your ability to win. Whatever you did, you took what I call a quantum leap. You challenged the world and you were invincible. You fought, you dared, and you won. Then something happened. You allowed self-doubt to pierce your armor. You listened to the naysayers of, the, of this world and started to believe them. You started to question your ability. What if my success was just a fluke? Maybe I was just lucky. Supposing I can't repeat that stunt. 
you started to falter, you started to doubt. In short, you stopped playing to win and you began playing to, not to lose. I'm here to tell you that there is a very big difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. It's the difference between super success and lukewarm mediocrity, between winning the game of life and losing or barely surviving. This seminar has one purpose, to rekindle and strengthen within you that searing flame of desire. Desire to make another quantum leap, then another and another until you reach stratospheric levels of success and leave all competition behind you in the dust. This seminar is about making you really and truly believe in yourself like you have never done before. Forcing you to recall a time when you acted as though you had no limits to your abilities, when you leapt the chasm and landed victorious on the other side. More importantly, this seminar is about daring, fighting, and winning. I want to tell you at the outset, there is no success without risk, no fighting without action, and no winning without sacrifice. If you are not willing to dare to take decisive action and sacrifice many of the aspects of your normal life, then this seminar is not for you. I'm here to say you cannot have it all, and any touchy-feely, silk-suited guru who tells you otherwise is just wrong, and he hasn't done it himself. But if you're willing to listen and learn to me, if you are prepared to avoid the company of morons and ignore conventional wisdom, if you join with me and look the world straight in the eye, dare to stand in your path and take the powerful decisive action, then each and every one of you can become much more successful than you are. This is not a, some happy slappy, feel good rah-rah. I'm not here for you to like me. If you want a friend, buy a fucking dog. I'm here to tell you how to load your fucking pockets with so much money ripped from out of the, your business or the business yet to be formed that they have they need a crane to haul it out. Uh, if I have to slap, kick, punch, and drag you over the finish line, then that's what I'll do. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm going to call you names and sometimes act like a nasty drill sergeant. I'll be up here doing whatever it takes to make you realize one thing. You've been too comfortable too long. You plumped your sorry ass down on a comfy chair a long time ago and have all but forgotten the war you once were. My task over the next week is to get you out of that armchair and turn you into a lean, mean, fucking fighting machine ready to take on the world, ready to make your own quantum leap personally in all respects of your life and ready to haul away cash in the tens of millions, if not more. I trust you will listen carefully to my message. And remember, you came here for me to challenge your limits, and I will, not to like or love me. I strongly suggest you keep that in mind or it will be an extremely tough week. It will be tough enough without any extra burdens. This is a dangerous group. Goodbye, YouTube.